Good evening, Larry Stern here. I'm here, Larry. Are you hosting this meeting? Uh, actually, Mr. Cleaver will be uh, hosting the meeting as usual, Mr. Bradley. Thank you. Did you get the request that I wanted to host the meeting so that we'd have an actual board member hosting the meeting and not our subordinate administration hosting a meeting? I did. And you chose not to abide by that advice? I did. Would you like to explain why? Uh, the Zoom meetings are created by Mr. Cleaver. He is the most experienced we have running the Zoom meetings. And that's the way we're going to execute until we can all get back in the building. Yet we have not been able to record these meetings or he has not been able to record these meetings. He's, he's truncated people. He fails to allow them to make a second comment in accordance with our policy. We have so many things that are failing our policies, uh, pertinent documents available before the meeting. You know, I, I don't feel that we're in compliance with our LASD policy when you do such a thing, Larry. I think it's immoral. And thank you for your opinion, sir. Well, who enforces, Mr. Oh, who enforces that opinion, sir? Do you enforce the policy? Who enforces the policy, Larry? Can we, can we Mr. please get to the meeting, on, we, Mr. We're Bradley? To. We want to Mr. Ask Bradley, you. the appropriate thing to do would please start by starting with the Pledge of Allegiance. We're not even having the meeting yet. We're having a conversation before the meeting starts. We're waiting for the, the meeting. Is, the meeting is scheduled You're starting at 545. It? Let's, let's do that now. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, policy 246 uh, we have is our student wellness policy. Um, just for a little background uh, of this, I'm sorry, sir. sir hold on. He reviewed yeah. our uh, policy so, yeah hold on uh, um, mr claver wait hold on we were, we were having a conversation you wanted to stop for the pledge of allegiance which i respected we should finish the conversation the question to our president mr. Bradley, was, we're moving we're moving, question, Bradley, we're moving all of the agenda the we can bring it up the, in open discussion the, bring it up this is an open discussion. discussion i'm asking a question oh, related not. to the open agenda discussion is item number five sir <laughs> uh, i'm having so, a conversation please, prior to the agenda sir policy you have to let people speak before hold on, on you have agenda. to let people speak before the agenda starts, sir. Again, policy 246 on the agenda. Just for background on this information, our, um, we have been reviewed by PDE uh, as part of our school nutrition program. And part of that uh, requirement is to update the policy to meet the new federal guidelines. Um, the guidelines are listed there as part of the policy. Uh, the change is everything that is in green to our current policy. This is recommended by PDE, and they also did recommend that we follow the PSBA template 246. So I know Mr. Bradley um, asked about templates from PSBA. So this is part of our review from PDE, and their recommendation is to make adjustments to meet the template. They actually sent us a copy so we could reference it for this policy. Once this policy is approved, we will be required to send a copy of the policy and also as all our policies are posted on the website. So this is part of the revisions that required as they reviewed our, our wellness, student wellness program and also our, our policy. Is there any questions uh, regarding uh, those changes? So Bradley, you could, you're in the panelists, you may speak. Out of respect to the attendees, I was waiting for anyone else to have a comment because in essence, you're asking for a recommendation, which is an official action in an agency. Sunshine Act requires that you seek public input, reasonable opportunity to comment prior to. So you guys are missing that. I was gonna make the statement that this PDF, whereas it has the link to the laws, does not actively activate those links. The, the savings of this file 
is such that it prevents you from linking and checking each of those linked laws. So I don't believe anybody that got this policy in time would have been able to review these links and how they relate to the law, sir. Why are we not saving these PDFs as live documents so that they can have access to the um, laws that they reference? Why is our administration not making it easy for the board to review the policies that are being presented by the state? Are you talking about the numbers that are listed under legal the, the, as the part of the uh, cover sheet? Let, let me let me talk to Larry because you know Larry, Larry's the board member. So Larry, are you are you on? Larry, can you hear me, Larry? I can certainly hear you. Oh, excellent. Larry, were you able to pull up these policies, PDFs, and then cross-reference through a link to the laws that they are referenced in the policy? Does your version of this document allow you to click on a policy like it does in our um, board docs and then have it link you to that school code, like number 10 is school code 1513, and then review this document. Were you able to review this document in time prior to it showing up here today with the way it was presented to you? I reviewed the document. I did not check each one of the law cases. Um, that is not my uh, scope, I believe. So, and if I would be reading those law cases, they're, I'm not a lawyer. So it's not gonna make the sense it does to me as if I would have a law degree. I have read the proposed policy uh, with the changes in green and have no issue. If, if, you, what is if you're not, able, if you're not able to read the law, Larry, as a, Citizen, Bradley, here's, we're not law. all we're going to read the, all of the laws that are associated. There's 20 different sightings of laws on there. That is not part of our responsibility, I feel. Now, maybe you feel different. Okay. If you want to read the laws that are supporting this document, that's very fine and dandy. But you, you, you A, did not do that, and B, feel that it's not your responsibility. Am I am I paraphrasing you properly? A, you did, did not do that. I did not B, review. Feel. I did not review the twenty law cases or so that are associated to this document. Thank you. Did our solicitor do that? Uh, as Mr. Cleaver had stated previously, we received these from PSBA, who, of course, you do not agree with. Uh, they do the research on the documents and the policies. It is PDE's recommendation that we follow this policy as prescribed by and completely um, completed by PSBA. You can challenge that if you like, and that's your prerogative. Well, the first challenge I'd like to make, since it is my prerogative, is that where is the accountability found within this document? So it's a law, it's a requirement, Look at the page, um, heck, pick page six of eight on the first policy that you're looking at. And it says, students shall be provided with a clean and safe meal environment. In the event that our district fails to do that, who is going to hold our district accountable? What is the process, sir? Larry, board president, what is the process in the event that this policy has not been met? PDE would be the one to 
enforce the policy and reprimand the district however they see fit. And our intention is to, to meet that. And if there's a concern of something not being clean, that would be, be brought to the building level principal and we would address address the concern. And then if it continues, it would go, you know, into the building supervisor and make sure that is addressed until eventually, you know, if it still continues to be an issue, we'll end up on my desk to, to make sure that that is addressed. So, so how does that student file that complaint, sir? They could notify someone if they're concerned of something not being clean. Where is that within this policy to instruct the student that is to be provided with this service in the event that they are not provided with the service so that the process and the procedures and the guidelines within its local government can meet those needs. It should have a state, this policy should have a statement of the ramifications if they're not met and the process to which it gets taken place. It could just say student tells in the event that this is not satisfied student tells us the, the principal of the school or tells the superintendent or notifies the board so that they can hold this government accountable to these actions, which you're calling lawful actions. And I just picked one page of eight and one sentence of eight that shows that this board is failing to meet its obligation under Pennsylvania school code to write policies and adjudicate those policies, which is our responsibility, Larry. And uh, I feel that that should, that action, that oath full responsibility should be met with fidelity. And apparently Larry isn't even qualified to do that. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm not qualified to read legal documents, Mr. Bradley, no doubt about it. And um, as we have always stated before, and as one of your main, uh, issues have been with the district complaint form. Uh, district complaint form gets filed. Everybody knows how to form, uh, formally compile a district complaint. Then it would be handled, you know, if they say the table's dirty, they file a district complaint saying the table's dirty. That's as simple as it is. Just excuse excuse me, Larry. Wait, wait, hold on, Larry. Hold, hold on, Mr. Claver. On the second <laughs> the, 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 page, hold on, wait, Mr. Steve, Claver. Hold on. He just made a statement. Bradley, you, you got to come on. He just said that there's a complaint process. Excuse me, Larry. Which, which responsibility? Yeah, which we, which complaint? Where is this the policy? Superintendent or designee uh, shall be responsible. You can see each building principal has a responsibility, and also staff members have a responsibility. Correct, but Larry, where is this complaint? That you're you've thinking? seen it. We don't have to retread this, Mr. Bradley. You've yeah. seen it before. You, there, we've started. We have a complaint, complaint process. You have to title. file proper complaints. We're not going to sit here and argue about it. You don't have a policy for complaints. That was the whole reason they had all that turmoil back in January. You, you don't. You only have a title. Are there any other questions? Wait, instead of it's a discussion, questions. sir. Do not cut off the discussion Is of the board any members. Other questions for policy two four six. Do not cut off the discussion, Mr. Host of the. Board of Directors debating policy. Mr. Discussing sir, are there any policy. more questions from you or, or Ms. Spinelli? Why are you cutting us Not off, sir? I. Do not cut off the cut. Ms. Spinelli, any more questions? No, I have no more questions. Please move on to the next policy. We're having a discussion on this one, uh, Ms. Spinelli. Do not let the host truncate that conversation. Larry brought up a yeah, conversation uh, about how the, the process works. To move on. Um, Policy 317.1, uh, you could see that uh, there is a change in this policy. This is for our school police officers to allow them uh, as part of that, that they need to be certified in accordance with the laws of the Commonwealth to test, excuse me, to possess any type of weapon. So even if it is a, um, any type of weapon, they have trainings that they are required to go through and meet all those responsibilities and get certified for. And so we want to include that in the policy that any school police officer in order to be able to carry such a weapon would be required to, to meet those re state requirements from the Commonwealth. And I see that that's the only addition to this policy, yeah. Mr. Uh, Cleaver. That is correct. That is the only, that is the only addition. Okay. 
I'm good to proceed. Policy um, 710. Everybody else, I have my hand raised still. <laughs> So, well, I have not seen it go to so Mr. Bradley. I can't tell if it's, it, it goes out. up and down all the time, so I can't tell which it is. It does not go up and down all the time, sir. It's always up. Okay. Normally, a host would say, Do you have, would the committee members like to opine on this law that you have that you're writing? Right? It would take turns. Why wouldn't we take turns? Why does Rita get to shut everybody up? You know, I don't, I don't really appreciate Mr. it. Mr. Bradley, in order to speak, so, you just have to press the space bar since you are a panelist. If you I, are on the, I don't want to interrupt you, sir. I don't want to interrupt you. A host, I really, would be, a I normal host it. would make it civil with the conversation. So they would normal, 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 normal host, a normal civil. host would have a, a uh, civil participant. Thank you. Uh, I am a civil participant. That's why I'm waiting my turn. So here you go. Ready? On this policy. It states at the bottom that the delegation of responsibility is to the superintendent. And then it says the superintendent or designee, if he so chooses, I guess, shall develop and disseminate administrative regulations implementing this policy. Where are those copies of that developed and disseminated administrative regulations implementing this policy from when it once was before are, that is not a change there are um signs throughout the building about no weapons on property uh you can see um no the school zones when you come in is also they're also posted throughout there as our policies are also posted um online so and you can see where it's there and that creating a safe school environment so and those are posted throughout actually on the district property district website there's actually metal signs when you're entering the uh, property. How, how about the new responsibility to make sure that our officers are fully trained? What yeah. administrative regulations are we going to use to implement that policy? We're going to do it on a yearly basis, six months. They supply other documentation to me that they re that they have completed all their requirements for the state. Uh, they actually go through either state police or local police for all their training regarding, uh, I believe it's every year, they have to recertify, um, you know, their, their shooting and different things as well. So we have all that information is required for them to supply to the school district to make sure that they are in compliance. And where is that kept? Uh, we keep that up here in files. Is it, is it part of the section 518 documents or is it a separate set of regulations that we're going to hold that document so it can be reviewed by either a board member or by the police or by whoever uh, needs to. They have all their, I can have an issue. We have their all their certifications and make sure they are compliant. Have you seen those documents, Larry? I have not, and I have not asked to see them, and I have not asked to see every document that is maintained in the files of the district administration building. Has anyone on this board seen that document, I wonder? Rita, have you seen that document? I'm not muted, right, sir? Did you see that document, <laughs> Rita? Can anyone hear me okay? I'm asking Rita whether or not she can see that document or saw that document. Uh, we can certainly hear you, sir. Oh, okay. Okay, so she's just ignoring it. Thank you. I guess we can move on. <laughs> Sorry, sorry about that. I was um, policy 710.1. Uh, you could see the addition there. Uh, most recently, you're aware that we did receive a the Heighton Area School District uh, did receive a school police car. Uh, so this policy uh, does reiterate that no district employee other than school police is authorized to operate the car unless it's an emergency or and they get that prior approval from the superintendent or designee. So that is just an addition to this uh, 
policy that we've had because we have an additional district owned vehicle now. Any questions for that addition? When are those documents reviewed? Where are those documents that they've been reviewed to ensure that these people are qualified drivers and don't have any of these uh, restrictions? And has anyone on this board ever seen them? We do collect uh, all their information. We also do make copies of employees' um, driver's license for approval. So when they do request a vehicle, we are able to document that they do have a driver's license. It's still valid and it's not, uh, for example, expired or they lost it for, for another for another reason if we were notified of it. So we are actually do that upon every employee that we hire. Uh, if they have a driver's license, we request a copy of that driver's license. And then prior to each application of this vehicle, it's checked or is it only in the event of an issue? In the event there's an issue, we definitely would check it, but we also do check to make sure, you know, that the individuals who are requesting the vehicles do have a driver's license on file. And a lot of times the people requesting the vehicle are the same individuals. A lot of times they are coaches or advisors of different groups, organizations. So we're pretty familiar with the individuals who uh, request these vehicles. How do we, how do we access to see if it's still valid? Do we just do it as every time they ask or only once a month, once a quarter, once a year? We would just look at, you know, to make sure they have a driver's license on file. Well, if it's on, how about if it's on their person before they use their car? I mean, if obviously if it was revoked, suspended or removed, they wouldn't have it. But if it's on file, the guy could go months or, or you know, a very long time before anyone would even know or even think to check. Most of the time when you pull out a, a, a car from a motor pool, there's a person that hands over the keys and, and their responsibility is to check that they have a driver's license and that the car is insured and the car is inspected, right? To protect the owner of that vehicle, which in this case is a government agency. I think not doing that would be irresponsible of our board. What do you think, Rita? I see Fred has his hand up. What does Fred think? Can we give Fred the floor, please, Mr. Host? Can we please, within accordance with 710 of the Sunshine Act, give the attendee, Fred Kammerer, the right to have a reasonable opportunity to comment prior to the... We will have an opportunity for public comment at the end. No, sir. It's before you make this recommendation. It's during the topic, sir. Reasonable opportunity. We'll also have an opportunity to make a comment when it is on the board agenda. They can comment before any motion is officially approved, which yeah. is an action. You sicken me, sir. Thank you. Again, Mr. Bradley, I would like the comments to please, to please stop. Any questions that's the point we want the comments to continue i want to hear what the people say i don't want you to stop these comments mr claver i don't want you to stop any the other ability questions to comment. Than point one other do you not understand about that an opportunity okay uh policy 805.2 uh is a is the uh, policy for school security personnel um so this in June, um, we will have a meeting um, prior to our board meeting as we did last year to discuss and update the board on security uh, as we did last year. That will be part of the exec session, which is allowable um, by school code 425 as part of it. So that'll part of the, the, the presentation will um, give you an update on our school security. It'll be very uh, similar to the same type of format that was presented last year. I believe it was presented by uh, Mr. Hauser and myself. 
last year. Mr. Tack and myself will be administering that presentation uh, this year. Um, so with, with this, you can see your school police officers uh, that we have. We do not have third party, uh, as it talks about at the beginning. Uh, we actually have um, school police officers who have the same legal rights and responsibilities as do our local municipal police. Um, so we will, uh, again, get the reports from them. There will be information from Safe to Say as part of that presentation, uh, which is referenced in here. And then that report is also filed uh, with the state. Any um, questions regarding this policy? I do, Mr. There at the end. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Isn't this is a brand new policy, correct? Uh, that, yes, and this is required in the school. You can see there too, kind of referencing back to what Mr. Bradley was saying at the end. Uh, the school police officers have to re complete their required training in accordance with the law, which is the Commonwealth, um, and it is all part of the responsibility. Also, our district is responsible for um, completing uh, school security drills in place of uh, one monthly fire drill. So we are, you know, following those guidelines as well. We do um, active shooter trainings. We do, of course, we do monthly fire drills, but we also do uh, other type of emergency type trainings where we call, uh, you know, working lockdowns, where, for example, uh, the training may consist of, okay, we have a, a dog running around a school building. Um, we're just want everyone to know that no one's to leave the building or enter the building because the threat of maybe possibly that dog getting into the school. Uh, so we may go through what we call working lockdown where the students and everything would, you know, go from their classrooms as, as normal, but until the situation is, is addressed and taken care of, uh, we would continue in that. We've also gone into working lockdowns if a student uh, would be removed, uh, possibly due to a seizure. We've had students who've had seizures in the classrooms to where the ambulance had to be called. Uh, so to keep the identity and trying to keep anything as private as much as possible, we may go to a working lockdown as in the process of that student being removed uh, from the school. So those are just some other examples of some of the um, trainings and some of the drills that we com that we do complete in addition to the uh, fire drills. Thank you. Mr. Cleaver. Yes. I uh, just pulled up the policy on policies right here and I just want to let everybody know exactly that this is the policy committee and our policy states this number one generally the superintendent shall review proposed policies and shall make policy recommendations to the policy committee the superintendent or designee shall bring proposed policy or revision of policy to the committee for review first reading the first reading shall occur at a meeting of the board and shall consist of a board review and option to move to a second reading. We are not taking action. We are not even making a recommendation. We are reviewing the policy that the superintendent legally brings to us to take a look at and to see if we want to take it to the board for a first reading. Yes, Mr. Bradley, you may consider that an action, but it's not. It's simply, this is a policy that we're going to take to the board for first reading. So if we're going to start following law and policy, we're going to start and include you also. That's what our policy says. That's what we're doing. That's enough discussion on that. Thank you. And just, I wanted oh, to clarify. Oh, my, my turn, sir, just to clarify. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Rita. I really appreciate you, you trying to read the law. I mean, the agency that we're in, okay, as defined in the Pennsylvania Sunshine Act, not our local policy that's trying to truncate your authority, says that the agency, the body, and all its committees thereof, Right? Authorized by the body to take official action, which we are authorized. We're a public standing committee, right? Or render advice on matters of agency business must follow these laws, right? So you have to provide public comment. The fact that you're not is bad. 
So then the other side is, what is official business, right? If you look up the definition of official business, Rita, which I'd really love you to do, but we can educate you here. That's no problem. It's an educational uh, facility. Let me take a look at it. I'm doing it online right now. Let's find. I don't official... need you to do that, I Mr. Bradley. I'll if you're I don't have a problem one with that. more time, Mr. Bradley. Make the action, sir. Please Rita. don't. Rita, hold on. Official action. Recommendation made not. by the agency, the establishment of a policy by an agency, right? The decisions of an agency, votes taken by the agency, proposals, resolutions, right? Reports. That is not what we're doing here. That will action. be done at a board meeting, and we are going to offer public comment after this is over. And so you, everything you're I trying to point think out you're is incorrect. Maybe I should educate you and do not. Ever, under any circumstances, so, refer to me as honey. Yes, ma'am. Now, at the same time, I think we should ask our solicitor. I think you should have that discussion, not between you and me. I think it'd be wise to allow the solicitor to, as Larry would say, interpret these laws to make sure that they are in compliance, because currently I think we're not. And anybody can make an objection to the Sunshine Act, which I'm doing right now, that our host is preventing public comment, a reasonable opportunity for comment prior to that official action. Now, if you'd like to get our solicitor, I think it's a wonderful idea. But right now, you guys are arguing things that are no reason to be argued. They're black and white and can be looked up. There, there's a reason a police officer is a police officer. Okay, he, he's the enforcement agency. You gotta respect that. My question is, who's the enforcement agency upon you, Ms. Spinelli? Who is the enforcement? Is there any other questions related to this policy? Um, Please move on, Mr. Cleaver. Let the public have a chance to speak. Uh, just, I wanted to go back and clarify. I, I did um, speak, and I apologize. And Lisa, we didn't have any third-party vendors or independent contractors. We do have outside security that comes uh, to some of our bigger and larger events. Uh, they are not. Uh, we contract them and that that contract always goes to the board for board approval so there is other individuals other than our school police officers and we also have uh lehigh municipal municipality will also assist if the event is you know needed for a larger because of a larger crowd so i did i just wanted to go back and make that clarification thank you excuse, Any, excuse me and and will the uh, Lee Heighton Borough Police be part of this report or only things within Lee Heighton uh, LASD issues? I mean, we had a lot of significant issues that got escalated outside of uh, the great work of our two resource officers. Um, will they be part of that report? Anything that was referred to uh, will be listed as part of a report if they were referred to uh, from, from our school. Excellent. I believe that transparency would be valuable. Thank you. Any any comment from the attendees? I know uh, you mentioned someone wanted to. Okay, we have Mr. Kemmer. Mr. Kemmer. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, I just wanted to add um, for the policy. Um, 710 one. Um, it is typical protocol, like with the company I work for and any company I did, to do uh, periodic uh, checks um, because, like, on a week to week basis or even month to month, you know, people can have something happen with their license and to keep, you know, the district uh, from getting sued with a license, unlicensed driver or someone who lost a driver that hadn't been checked. Uh, getting in an accident, that might be something that we would consider building into this policy, that there will be periodic checks, um, like let's say once every six months or whatever, uh, if it's not a, a too much of a cost to the district and the comment. Thank you, Fred. I, I completely agree. I think the actual way to mitigate the liability is to physically have it checked upon each dispatch of that vehicle. Um, anything less than that would, would leave you open to the same liability. 
it's not that hard to do. They have driver's license checks. You, the person just submits to it and they can do it online. They can do it a lot of places. Our resource officers would have access to that. Same with the uh, local police with, that we can coordinate with to ensure that every driver of every vehicle is a licensed driver, a registered vehicle, and an insured vehicle. I believe our insurance company also made mention of some of the problems that other districts had with uh, such um, problem, with such issues of non-compliance. We do have a form that we fill out. I will uh, check and bring that back. I'm looking at, um, we should have license number and also a uh, expiration date as part of the request. If not, I do believe it's wise to, to have that. So thank you, Mr. Kemmer. So Rita and, and Larry, are we agreeing that this policy should include the enforcement of the review of a policy of a driver's license prior to the release of any keys that are owned by the district? I, Mr. Bradley, as an um, administrative- uh, I'm sorry, I asked for Larry's, I know, I asked for Larry's opinion, I'm, I'm looking to make the change to the form immediately instead of waiting for, for a reading for, um, I believe Mr. Kemmer. Uh, is correct in that uh, we can make that change into the form that they are required to put their driver's license number and also their expiration date as another uh, insurance or just it's adding a line to a form that they would be required to fill out. And, and I respect that. I think that's a good idea. I agree, completely agree with Mr. Kemmerer's idea and your implementation of it. But what you're still lacking is whether or not that information is valid. And you do not check that, and that should be checked. It should be validated before you hand over keys to somebody. It, whether we have, maybe they have a class one license instead of a class two, or maybe they don't have the right license to be used for that vehicle. There's a responsibility prior to releasing a asset of the district that they should be checked. And it's very easy to do prior to using that vehicle. So I'm asking my board, my publicly elected officials, Larry and Rita, inside this policy meeting, are we going to add the responsibility to our subordinate administration to ensure that that license is valid prior to releasing the keys to some coach or even, I hope no students, but maybe a maintenance guy or whoever, right? Or a teacher. Are we going to validate that license prior to handing them their keys? So you're going to say that every time one of our custodians who drives the vehicle every day is we're going to validate his license every day. Is that what you're really saying? I'm saying, I'll say it one more time. Oh, no, no, no. You don't, have to, you don't have to reiterate verbatim. I'm just asking you, are you saying that every time before a person who is authorized, and it could even be the vehicle they use every day as part of their job in the school district, you're saying that you need to have that license validated every day when it is the responsibility of the employee should they get themselves in any kind of trouble with the licensing, as it is stated in this document, to inform the administration immediately. I mean, that, that's absurd that you're going to say somebody has to, whoever who uses a, a vehicle every day, that you're going to have to check their license every day and run it through the systems. The amount of overhead is tremendous. And that's my comment. Thank you. No more. And, and let, let me help you because apparently. Don't have suffer. to help. I'll help you. I let me help you. Your help. Obviously, you've never done this before. Is that vehicle assigned to that employee or is it a. A motor pool vehicle, sir. That's the first question. That was not elaborated in your comment. I, I can respect that. That's why I'm very you condescending know, to make sure that every little no, dot is right, because apparently you. you don't understand the concept here. I, yes, I if think the district I has a motor pool, if they have a motor pool and other people are using that vehicle or whoever's using that vehicle, they should be checked every day. Yes, if you're going to assign a vehicle to an individual, and hold them liable and responsible for what happens with that vehicle and make it on them, sounds great. If you're not gonna make it on them and you're gonna put it on this district, those stakeholders that we represent, 
Yeah, you're going to check it every time before they turn that key on. Because that's just um, how it works. And Mr. it's not Kemmer, hard to Mr. do. Mr. Kemmer has a comment again, please. Um, I, I, I agree, Larry, that um, something like that would be ridiculous to do every time they're going to, although I do respect what you're saying, Mr. Bradley, um, simply put is the, the way typically it happens is before they even step into a vehicle for the first time, we say, okay, they're a valid license, they're allowed to drive uh, for a certain duration. Let's say we do periodic checks like six months, one year. There are, like you said, Larry, required by by our policies to to say, hey, I had a traffic ticket. Okay, so the periodic checks uh, also keeps them honest as well. So let's say we do a six month periodic check, and it comes up that that employee did in fact have an infraction, but didn't bring it to us. So it sort of keeps them honest. You know, not that you don't trust the employees who are driving the, the vehicles. But it is a, a, a checks and balance um, that should be periodic, not every time. That 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 would be too cumbersome. And uh, secondly, um, to what Mr. Bradley said earlier um, about people driving the proper vehicles, I know that there's a certain number of students in a bus potentially that would require um, the license to be a Class B. Um, I don't know what that number is, and I, I think Mr. Cleaver might know that, but just as long as like our, our little school buses, the little ones, when we're going to a, a wrestling tournament or whatever, that if it doesn't go over that threshold to make sure that those people who are driving the kids back and forth have that Class B license. I, and I'm not 100% sure what the number is, and we would want to be cognizant of that as well. And the comment. And... and Fred, I agree with you, and I agree that it's cumbersome. However, there's ways to subrogate that risk. It might be a contract with that driver that's using that car to make sure that they don't have to do that. But somehow or another, you cannot allow someone to use a vehicle that they're not licensed to use. That's just huge risk for a district, especially with carrying kids or being around parking lots and driveways with children. I don't, I don't think that the burden of having access or the subrogation of our risk would be unheard of. We do it for the bus drivers, right? Every bus driver has to have a report and their access to their um, driver's privileges. And instantly, if they are revoked, that bus company is notified. So the subscription to that administrative control is what it would be called. It's not that big a deal, Larry. I don't know why you get so bent out of shape. You're just goofy, man. Goofy. Hey, thank you for your adjective. Any other any other comments on your open discussion? Okay. I have two. Okay. I have two. We want to have a public complaint policy which was requested months and months ago, which has not been implemented. We would like to change the host of these meetings to be a board member that's accountable to the people so they can hold the subordinate administration accountable to them. And then also, I'd like to have a discussion on how these policies are being published to the public prior to these meetings. You see four or five people in attendance, which is great. But the reality is we could do better. And I noticed that other districts using board docs, like we use board docs, apparently have a, maybe it's a plugin or whatever they want to call it that allows meeting agendas, pertinent documents, and the financial records and financial documents to be put in those board docs so that the public can see them prior to a authorized agency committee meeting. Can I please have discussion on those three topics, Mr. Host? I believe you just brought them up for discussion. I brought them up. Now you're the host. Facilitate the meeting and let's get the discussion started. I'd appreciate it. You got five people in attendance and five panelists. Thank you. 
the responsibility, by the way, sir, in school policy 011 is to seek public input. Thank you. As we have during this meeting. Uh, any other comments? Let, let me try for you, sir. Let me try for you because don't apparently it's no, don't, don't argue yourself. with me. There is no discussion. There is, hold on, don't argue with me. Let's try. Is anyone in this meeting would like to make a comment on the idea of having a parental or public complaint form available to this government agency? Does anybody have any input in this meeting at all? Whether or not this district should have a public complaint form to this government agency? or should not have a public complaint form available to this public meeting. Can we have that? And then I'm gonna ask, hey, Gail, I'd love to hear from you. How about this guy, John, Sue, or Suzanne Howland? Uh, do any of those guys are obviously in this meeting. We'd, we'd appreciate your input. Is there, I'm seeking it. Gail, are you Please able help? to, Gail, can you hear? Can you hear us? Gail, you have comment? Okay. I guess any any other discussion. Let, let, let's try again, sir. She has her hand raised. She's trying to do it. There was can, no can response, find... sir. Yeah, I, I understand that. And you're the one with the the button that says mute participant. You know, we don't no, actually need that, the, sir. I would say mute participants. Thank well, you. Well, let me try one more time. Gail, can you, can, if you can hear me, raise your. Thank you. Raise your hand. See if you can try again. You're muted. Right. Do you want do you want to call Mr. Cleaver on his cell phone? I can give you his number if that helps you. Would you like to call the host cell phone number, Gail? Put your hand up and down if you if you'd like to call it in that way, because apparently Mr. you're Bradley, muted. again. Uh, Ms. Mahalik, do you have any comment? Ms. Mahalik. Ms. Mahalik. Again. Barring the technical difficulties and competency of this meeting to allow an attendee to voice their opinion, let's move on to the second one. Unless Anything, she's able to speak. Any other comments? Yeah, um, the next comment. Well, so let's move on to the second subject. You can host. Go ahead. What was the second second subject that you'd like to try, Mr. Bradley? It's open discussion. There is no discussion that I have. You're, you're the host, sir. You're acting as the host. You're acting Mr. Bradley, as Mr. You're able to talk. So this is discussion. You are having your discussion. I have no comment based upon what you brought up. Any other discussion? Try to unmute Gail again, please, sir. Give her your cell phone number. Let her call you. You want me to give it? I, I believe at this point we've had uh, discussion on all the policies. Uh, we've had ocean open discussion post the discussion on the policies, which covers us from the Sunshine Act. So I would like to make a move, um, or a motion that we move that these uh, policies go for a first reading to the board. I second. That, are, wait, are you seconding that recommendation, Rita? Yes. Okay, so you're seconding a recommendation by a committee to go to the board. Am I, am I correct? Yes. Any right, other... Good for you, Rita. I love you. Thank you. Rita is a 101, baby. I'm loving it. I can't wait to make the video. Thank you very much. Can we please try Gail one more time? Her hand is still raised. She should have the opportunity, a reasonable opportunity to participate. And apparently uh, Miss Barry showed up. If she would like to make a comment on those policies, that would be great. Miss Barry, would you like to see 
a complaint policy her. on would you like to see a complaint policy miss barry a public complaint policy written into the lehigh area school district code gail i'm trying an, another time are you able to hear Hey, I invite Gail to email Mr. Cleaver the comments that she might have had to be included in the minutes. Okay, thank you. And at this point, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Before that, since we're going to have minutes for this meeting, which is wonderful, are they going to be in lawful compliance with our LASD policy? Absolutely. Are you going to ensure that? And who's going to be the authority? All, all the minutes are to make sure. In all the minutes are in compliance Absolutely. Absolutely. Not so who's that's my point hold on that's the, my point the meeting, so the meeting minutes are no longer verbatim because right. that is too much of a burden on the secretary or the personnel who is doing the minutes of our meetings which i appreciate and i have no problem with that but they should still at least meet the requirements of the lasd policy so if we have a policy and we found that that policy is not being applied mr stern what maybe is the you, process? Maybe you could highlight how what? we're not following that policy because Thank I've heard this many times, but I haven't heard any examples of how we're not following the policy. So without the evidence or not the I'll be examples glad. of what needs to be changed, we would love you to submit that. And how do I submit that? And under whose authority is it going to be rectified? Who has the responsibility you to accept that complaint? You can submit it to the administration and we will review whoa, 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 it. We're, we're going to complain against complaint. It's a complaint against the administration, sir. Who does that complaint go to? It's a complaint against our subordinate the, administration. The administration, for the failure the administration to will interpret your complaint and let us know what the answer to that is. Mr. Okay. Bradley, so you complain against all our board the complaint. Mr. Cleaver, Mr. Cleaver, you can email, and if the majority of the board <clears> makes <throat> the recommendation that we change the process, we will do that. But until we have directive from the majority of the board to change the procedure, it is not going to happen. Okay, Just but hold on, well, hold on, Mr. Mr. Cleaver. Wait a second. That's not how that policy that process works. You have a policy. You're supposed to follow it, right? We have policies. You're supposed to follow them. You may feel we're not follow them. Policy, but that doesn't mean we're not following it. Just because I, I, it's not your way to being followed does not mean that the policy or procedures or anything for that fact is not being followed. I and agree I, with the concept. So what happens is the process is supposed to be, and I'll put this on the record, and then you guys can hang up on me and do your thing. But I'm going to put it on the record. The process is supposed to be, if anyone finds that the administration is in violation of a school policy, they are supposed to file a public complaint, and it would be nice to have a form in one of our policies, with the board of directors, at which point the board of directors will investigate that complaint to find out whether or not the administration is or is not in compliance with the policy. and it will adjudicate that policy to decide whether big word for you rita it'll decide whether it met or didn't meet and then it will offer the remedy based upon a derogatory comment talking, that was just made I'm by talking, mr sir. bradley i'm, I'm making talking, a motion sir. to adjourn this meeting I'm talking, second, sir. and i will no second longer, mr you are no so longer that. speaking in constructive language i sir. am sir i'm Me? teaching you how the policy oh. works don't be so upset at this point, we have a motion and a second to adjourn. Thank you all for attending, and I hope you're you're shutting us down. Well. I'm having a conversation about how the policy uh, works, sir. And I apologize for the uh, remarks. If anyone uh, is listening and takes offense to them, thank you.